Hi guys, I'm Christopher. Um, I used to be an instructor for Black Hawk helicopters for the U.S. Army. Uh, so I'm not completely uncomfortable standing in front of people. Just wanted to hand these out. Uh, you can continue taking notes on the sheet that you've got and it should go along with the pages that we have here. And I think I've got just enough. <clears throat> now, you're welcome. Chuck had mentioned that Chuck, Nathan, and I all sort of do the same thing. We work in the uh, same fields, but we are not competitors. It's my personal belief that nobody in here is a competitor. You don't have a competitor because nobody does exactly what you do. So what you want to look at is uh, the first thing we have on our list here, how to brand yourself. So I'd like to ask the room, uh, what is it that are some stereotypes about real estate agents? Mm -hmm. If anybody has an idea, throw it out. A stereotype? A stereotype about... Tons of money and don't work. There you go. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is talk to people and the money rolls in, right? Yeah. yeah. They could just close a deal. Just close a deal? And how would that make somebody feel if that was your brand, let's say? Exactly. Yeah. It's harder to build a relationship that way, kind of like being the used car salesman, right? You, people automatically don't trust you when you walk on the, on the lot. Any others? Everybody here drives a Mercedes Benz, right? Okay. <laughs> One of the things that people think that our car is paid for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We get a car when we're real estate agents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a company car? <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> so, uh, who here has a brand already? Everybody's hand should be up because you are your brand. One of the unique things about being a real estate agent, whether you're on a team or whether you're a freelancer, is that you own your own business. And a lot of agents don't think of themselves as a business, but you have to do your own bookkeeping, you have to do all, all of the paperwork, you have to do your taxes at the end of the year. You are a business and you are your brand. So when people come into contact with you, they're automatically going to have those ideas, right? Like maybe you're just here to close a deal, but you have to be able to put your brand out there so that they'll know that the person they're approaching isn't like that. And a little bit of what Chuck was talking about earlier is you know, the know, like, and trust aspect. Now for us as a, don't touch the microphone, that's a great, great lesson. Uh, <laughs> for us, we, we want to be able to uh, put our brand out there so people know, like, and trust us before they even reach out to us. And I personally believe that the best way to do that is by being omnipresent. And you can be omnipresent by being on all the social media sites, being in a magazine, being on a billboard, and uh, in fact, Nathan was talking earlier about how somebody found him on Google, but it turns out that they had actually heard him on the radio first. So they had learned to trust him before they even found him on Google. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, all of the places that they see you is where you're having an impact on them. And then when they finally do reach out to you, they feel comfortable with you because you have that brand aspect out there. So what is your brand? That's the first thing that you want to figure out, and the easiest way to do that, I put a couple of questions in the flyer there. How would you answer these questions? Um, you don't necessarily have to do that right now, but I'm going to work my way back around to the questions as well. Uh, how you answer these questions uniquely from the way other people would answer it is one of the things that's going to set you apart from other real estate agents. The other thing that will set you apart from other real estate agents is what are your hobbies? What are your likes and dislikes? You're a vegetarian, so that's unique, right? And if you lean into that, you're going to be able to speak the language of you know, your, your friends and your followers because it's the lifestyle that you live. So that's a lifestyle choice. Other lifestyle choices might be going to the gym or you're a movie goer or maybe you're, you're the only agent who drives a Humvee instead of a Mercedes Benz, right? Whatever sets you apart from the other agents that are in your area or who you might consider your competition, those are the things that you want to lean into. And uh, a lot of newer agents make the mistake of trying to do all of the things that everybody else is doing when what they really need to do is they need to separate themselves from that. So 
I mentioned YouTube really quickly, and the reason I want to get back to these questions is these questions could be the first start to creating your YouTube channel if you don't have one already. And um, you want to find questions. What I like to do when I create like a video for my business is I will sit down in front of my camera, I'll ask myself a series of questions out loud because I'm going to edit all of it out and then I will answer the questions because it's something that I'm knowledgeable about. So somebody might ask me, you know, uh, how long have you been in business, for instance, right? And I could say, well, we opened our doors and I could just ramble about that for a couple of minutes and then ask myself the next question. And when I go back in and pare down the video, I just cut out the questions part and now my videos look like I'm just talking about things that I know in front of the video and it makes it feel comfortable like somebody's in the room with me. They don't have to hear the questions to know what the questions were, if that makes sense. Now the great thing about YouTube is it is the second largest search engine in the world. Anybody know what the first largest is? Google. Google is the first largest search engine. So Google actually owns YouTube. So everything that you say in a YouTube video is then they create the closed caption out of it and Google reads the closed caption so every word that you speak becomes what we call SEO or search engine optimization. So when you're talking in your video, Google can read that and know that the things that you're talking about are on brand for your company or your brand. So you can take that video, you can take the words from it, and once, once YouTube has created the closed caption, you could go in, you could pull those words out, and you could create a blog out of it. And you could just put an image up there from your video. Put a link to the video, put a blog on your website. That's going to drive more SEO to your website. And then Google's going to say, oh, they have a website here. They have a YouTube channel here that you can link to your Facebook page. They have a Facebook page here. And I don't know if everybody's on it or not, but LinkedIn is super important for real estate agents because that's where all the professionals are. So if you have your YouTube, Facebook, uh, what did I say? LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. Well, I said that already. Uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and your blog on your website. And you have all four of those sort of tied together with what we call backlinks because you're linking to, hey guys, I wrote, I wrote a blog here from Facebook. It takes them to the blog. The blog says, this blog came from this video. If you prefer to watch video, go to my YouTube channel. So you kind of tie everything together so that it's all, it's all branded for you. And then Google sees that and they see that you are consistent in your branding. And that's how you become omnipresent because you've got all four channels covered. You could do Instagram if you want, you could do TikTok if you want, all from that one YouTube video. So you can use the one video to create the other four or five aspects of your marketing and uh, be out there for the world to see. Who's got some hobbies? What are some hobbies that you, <laughs> what's that? I like to sing and play the piano. Oh, wow. Do you read music? Yes. And could you talk about that for five or 10 minutes? If, I could. Yeah. Not me, I'm a camera guy. So when, when we start talking about the difference between Nikon and can, uh, Canon, like, Nobody else here would care, right? But other camera people would care. So that's going to drive me towards my audience. Talking about music could drive you towards your audience. Uh, the church that you attend could be, you know, the, the, the charitable work that you do could be your, your focus. And then uh, kind of the last thing that I wanted to talk about is other ideas besides just sitting in front of a camera and saying these are things that I know. Another thing that's really important to do as you're branding yourself because you like to farm out certain areas, right? Why are those areas important to you? I know Karen's crushing Green Castle because you know, she, li she lives in the area and she knows people who are in the area and they already know and trust her. But um, if you wanted to farm a different place, like if you wanted to go down to Hagerstown, you could do list videos. Like what are the 10 things about Hagerstown that I love? Or why should you move to Hagerstown? And you could just grab your phone Record yourself in front of the Maryland Theater and talk about the history of the Maryland Theater for a little bit. Then go to another place. Go to the Broad Axe and talk about how you've had some meetings at the Broad Axe and you love their work, you know, and you kind of put those 10 things together and you put a list out there. Then people who are starting to move 
to Hagerstown, they're going to search on the second largest search engine, YouTube, why should I move to Hagerstown? And that's going to be in your keywords when you create the video. Why should you move to Hagerstown? I've got a 10 list reason for you why you should move to Hagerstown. Here we are at the Maryland Theater, right? And then just move into that. And anything that you could think of, talking about the music or talking about your church or talking about the area that you live or the parks. Um, and the reason why I wanted to get back to these questions, I just grabbed those top three questions off of Google. So if you can't think of what other people would be asking uh, for, for a certain area or for your specialty, your technique, whatever, you can just go to Google and say, what do people want to know about real estate in Hagerstown? What do people want to know about moving to Greencastle? And you're going to get a list from Google. There's another one that I put in there called Answer the Public. Um, you can only do like three searches a day on there for free. They want to charge you for everything now. But um, Answer the Public will, you ask one question and it will tell you what people are asking, like the top 100 questions uh, on all the search engines will come in and it kind of mind maps it out for you. So. Uh, just some ideas there for you guys, and uh, we're going to stick around after if anybody has any further questions. And um, Nathan is going to be up next.